Hey guys, and welcome to another unedited vlog, I guess. Anyway, I wanted to take this moment. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm releasing this on my 33rd birthday. So happy birthday to me. I wanted to take a moment today and, and tonight, I actually just got out of the shower after working out um, and talk about 2021 and probably a little bit of 2020 as well. Um, it was a very unique year for me. Uh, a lot of weird stuff happened. A lot of stuff was going on and a lot of stuff you guys had an inclination of what was going on, but you didn't know the exact details. So heading up, uh, and starting off with the end of 2020, um, it was a really, really difficult time for me. Um, 2019 was when I lost my mom, so I already had my first Christmas without my mom, but I had my second Christmas without my mom in December, and my second Thanksgiving without my mom in November, um, but the key part of that was we were obviously all in the pandemic times. In all of 2020, I saw five people in person, that's it, five people. Um, long gaps and I want to thank a lot of you guys that came to streams or hung out with me or interacted with me on social media um, I honestly don't know if I would have made it through 2020 if not for all of that and I'm trying to not get emotional but it's gonna happen because I'm already talking about my mom but it was the most depressing and loneliest time of my life in 2020 I had my first Christmas away from home um, I was completely by myself in my home for the second Christmas without my mom. Um, I had Thanksgiving by myself, which I've gotten used to at this point. But I was actually in a really, really depressed state on New Year's, especially going into 2021. Um, simply because, I, I, and I talked about this this year on New Year's and posted on social media, but I've never had... Uh, a romantic relationship around New Year's. So I've never had a New Year's kiss. But after 2020's entire year of not seeing people really at all, I saw five people because I'm immunocompromised and I'm highly at risk. And if I get COVID, I am one of the higher percentile likely to die. So obviously I've gotten my, my COVID, vac uh, COVID shot, COVID vaccine, whatever you want to call it. Um, and am boosted up now but at that time it was a very very difficult time for me as an extrovert especially um and i want to thank my friends that reached out to me and hung out with me and gamed with me and all kinds of stuff during that time um i don't want to name them off because i'm going to forget people but you know who you are and i really appreciate every single one of you i have wonderful friends and to those that were able to safely come and visit me and surprise me thank you um, I got to see my brother for the first time in years in 2020 he flew out and we we spent a day together which was really nice but heading into 2021 I was really lonely really really lonely um, and 2020 was like my best year revenue wise on twitch and the channel seemed to be blowing up and things were going great. Um, and we're, and, but behind the scenes, I was struggling. I had to force myself to get on stream because I knew it helped my mood and everything, but man, oh man. Um, but we got through it and we got through it together and I can't thank you guys enough. But anyway, the point of this video is 2021, not 2020. Um, but 2021 came in, um, really down, really lonely time. January, you know, I kept with streaming. I kept, I kept going, but um, there was a huge change on Twitch that happened, and all of a sudden viewership massively declined, um, and that was difficult to deal with. But you know, I, I got to do what I got to do, and I appreciate all your guys' support, and I will never take any of that for granted. Um, the blessing that I have to be able to do what I do. But 2021 started off really lonely, really depressing. Um, numbers started to decline, which was really, really difficult. But I stuck with it and I kept with it and I figured out editing and, and trying to do stuff more for YouTube again. And that kicked up for a bit. Um, 
and then I uh, COVID kind of went down, so I was able to see people sometime around like June. Um, I, I don't have a calendar in front of me, otherwise I'd be looking up exact dates. But I, I turned 32. I had my birthday. Um, I streamed with you guys. Ellie came and surprised me, and then I, I continued on with streaming and focusing on stuff like that. Um, and really, the beginning part of this that year was not that big of a deal. Um, it wasn't until like mid-year when things started to get really interesting. Um, when is Red Nose Day? Let me look up Red Nose Day real quick. Red Nose Day is... What day is Red Nose Day? I was a part of that stream. Red Nose Day happened March 19th. Um, and I was excited about it. I got to hang out with Matt Pat, who's a good friend of mine. I got to see Ethan for the first time in forever. Um, it was really good to see him um, and talk with him for a bit. I saw my friend Sam. I saw a bunch of other friends behind the scenes in the production team um, and really worked on that event. I worked on some other events throughout the year, but um, worked on that event. But the interesting part about Red Nose Day is like the day before, and I made sure that I didn't have COVID or anything like that, all of a sudden my, my tonsils started to feel a little weird and it was, I had wrote it off as a sore throat since I, I tested negative for COVID. Um, but that persisted. And for those of you that were watching my streams, you saw the tonsil get bigger and bigger and it actually expanded to, I had three noticeable swollen lymph nodes in my neck. It ended up being more than that when they finally did a MRI with contrast, which was my first time ever having an MRI with contrast. And, you know, after that, it persisted for a month. I saw ENTs, I got tests, um, and things were were going on. You know, they, the tonsil wouldn't go down, the swelling wouldn't go down, no matter what antibiotics I took, steroids, all the different stuff that they gave me, they would not go down. And um, eventually it was one of those things where um, all the doctors and even the MRI technician all thought it was cancer. Um, and I kept it very close to the vest because I didn't want to scare anybody. And I also didn't want to cry cancer before I had results before I had anything um, done. And so in July, I obviously, uh, in, in, in July, I went on the work retreat. From the work retreat, I went home um, to get a emergency tonsillectomy done with the same person who had taken out my other tonsil. Why they only took one the last time beside the point. Which, by the way, that was back in 2016, right before I moved out to LA. And they thought that that might have been cancer, lymphoma, to be specific. But this one showed even more, especially with the other lymph nodes showing up. And it was a very scary time. And I kept it under wraps because I didn't want to scare anybody. But I had talked to a number of friends of mine, the ones that I, you know, trust in my, my close inner circle. And and let them know because I was obviously feeling a little bit scared. And this is the thing about that is like, I'm not scared of death. I was only scared because of my dad and my brother and having lost my mom to cancer in 2019. And if this suddenly me had cancer and <laughs> it was scary and I'm crying because it was, it was scary in the fact of how much pain that would put on my family and my friends. Not for me. I faced death numerous times with my kidney transplant. But anyway, I, I had the emergency tonsillectomy and the recovery of that is awful. I couldn't talk. I was in pain. I couldn't eat what I wanted to eat. Um, I lost a decent amount of weight, but nothing good. Also, COVID weight, my God, I'm still trying to get it off because the exercising, but um, I had to wait about a week after the surgery and my ENT comes in um, in a follow-up saying he had just gotten the results and he was absolutely blown away that again, it was not lymphoma. And that's huge. 
That's huge. The only problem with that for me was we never figured out what it was. It was just swollen and it was swollen for months. We're talking March through June into July. And this surgery took place in like mid July, mid, mid late July. So you're talking about something that's been there for two months and then other lymph nodes showed up. Um, and I, I went home to Ohio because I needed somebody to be able to take care of me and I knew my dad would be able to do that. Whereas out here in LA with COVID going on and with my friends in LA and their working situation, I couldn't have somebody with me 24 seven. And that's a problem because if you have a throat bleed or if you, you have some pain management and other issues, it's very scary. Um, and it's a very painful and difficult thing to go through having done it once, which is why I chose to go home for that surgery. And luckily, again, it wasn't cancer. So um, that was a massive, massive deal. Um, and then after recovery, I had a big project I had to go to and it took longer to recover. So I was down there later, um, but I had an absolute blast working on that project for about a month and a half. But you're talking about during all this time, I did less streams because my throat was bothering me and I, I couldn't, you know, be energetic as much because stuff was going on in the background. And then on top of that, I had to take time off from my consulting job because I couldn't talk and do stuff. And then when I was out, out of town, I was busy working on that. So I couldn't work on my consulting stuff. So I had to, basically take a month unpaid leave from my consulting gig. I had to not stream for like two months straight. And I came back and you guys welcomed me um, so kindly and so wonderfully. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for that. Um, uh, coming back in September, we got back into it. But then I got back into the normal flow of things and we got into November and holiday season and every holiday season tough it's always really tough and my thanksgiving i made that tiktok in the turkey outfit which i was super hype about um and it didn't pop off like i hoped it would but it was i thought it was hilarious i'm very proud of that um i made my thirst talks i cut my hair um which was huge uh, after the April Fool's OnlyFans, which, holy crap, thank you guys so much for the insane support of a hair-only OnlyFans. Like, uh, incredible. I, I can't thank you guys enough for that because that really helped me as well, that that joke thrived. And I had a lot of fun creatively doing that. So when April hit, that was really fun. And then obviously the throat stuff happened that impeded. Um, and then I had fantastic people who helped me out with it throughout that time. <clears throat> um, and November hit, I, I was really depressed on Thanksgiving because I didn't get invited. Well, I did get invited to something, but then other plans got in the way. So I couldn't do the travel to go to the, the, the invitation that I did get. Um, and so I ended up having fast food on Thanksgiving, but for me, Thanksgiving was never a big deal growing up. So it wasn't a big deal. Um, and then Christmas came around and, um, uh, or no, even before that, I went I went and visited Fu and Bird at, for the first time in person in October and met some amazing people, um, made some cool stuff with them on their streams and, and some stuff that hasn't come out yet. Um, I got to spend time with them, which oh, I can't believe I met them in 2019 and they're two of my best friends now. <laughs> such wonderful kind people i i can't thank them enough for inviting me to come and visit them be a part of their halloween party and there's so many other creative projects that we're supposed to be working on together but life's kind of gotten in the way um but there's so much more we have planned and i'm so excited for it um obviously birds a part of tuesdays along with uh ag who's a fantastic human as well i got to meet ag in person for the first time oh that was that was so fun the amount of laughs that was that was a great getaway and it went by too fast but at the same time i took more time off from stream which was difficult um i missed so much time in 2021 streaming and, and didn't get a lot of content put out there 
and and it hurt my bottom line it hurt my revenue which which sucks but um it is what it is uh my mental health definitely needed it and it was huge so then november happened i made that TikTok that i was talking about um and i made arrangements to go to see burden foo for new year's again and to go home for christmas um i worked on the big a uh, number of big events uh charity events that were going on especially thank miss which was a blast a uh, huge shout out to sean and the amazing community around thank miss entirely um all the teams involved in that and the incredible success that was um, mark and i got to hang out on set which was really fun um i got to make uh to talk with a, a make-a-wish kid who also had a kidney transplant which is huge um uh anna or anna i don't remember which way it's pronounced so i apologize um was really great to meet you and your family and i'm wishing you all the best um and obviously i didn't know at the time that that you had also received a kidney transplant i found out after the fact but um i i went home for christmas and i saw my dad um and then he retired which i wasn't there for because i i had work to do so um i flew out uh for new year's with Fu and bird and panga and tones and so many wonderful people nos tiny uh, uh picks um i saw noah when i was there um incredible incredible people just just a blast spending the time with them uh shifter um uh, zuji there i think i got all the names that i saw i think no teddy i'm missing people but i appreciate every single one of you that i met there and um and then of course um i found out about uh zombie and i'm very thankful for bird and Fu and the friends that I had around during that time, um, some of which didn't know, but um, when I found out, um, Wade had called me. I didn't find out uh, through the internet, luckily. And um, I just messaged Bird, who was, who was in the other room. <laughs> he was using the bathroom. Um, and he came down, and I uh, basically immediately met him and, and gave him a hug and told him what had happened. And still to this day, it, it hurts my soul to have lost such a wonderful human and creative person and friend. I had just seen him in November and it was really tough. Patrick came down, um, we both saw him, we had a good time and it just, I can't believe he's gone. But there's anything I, I continue to to strive to do and it's to put positive things out in the world and and use my voice and creativity to inspire others much like zombie inspired me in numerous ways um especially on this fitness kick that i'm back into and and so much more um i will cherish every conversation i had with him every dinner or moment i talked or hugged or just was around he lit up a room, and I appreciate him so much. So, um, found that out before New Year's, and then luckily had a ton of friends around, many of which didn't know what had happened or what was going on, but um, I appreciated it. But there's anything to be learned from this it's that life is is a roller coaster ride it ebbs and flows twists and turns dips and dives in directions you never expect and now starting out in 2022 i'm posting on tiktok every other day i'm i had one tiktok go viral which was hilarious just eating snow on a piece of cinnamon toast going mmm fresh powder um 
and I'm, I'm reinvigorated to get creative and to have fun. And I have a lot of stuff and a lot of projects coming up that I wish I could tell you about. But in about two days after you see this video, probably, you um, should keep an eye out for an announcement. Because something's coming. Just trust me. I think you'll like it. Um, but um, New Year's happened. I had a great time. I started into my fitness kick to get better better in shape and healthier again before the new year. So I don't call that my new year's resolution. And I don't do resolutions anymore. I do goals. Um, and this is something I've learned because most new year's resolutions aren't kept. And instead I'm setting goals that are very achievable for me. And goal number one is to get healthier and back into shape. Um, I want to get a six pack again. It's been years since that has happened. It's going to be really hard for me with the scar tissue down there from my kidney transplant but I'm working towards it. I'm gonna be creative. I'm gonna be posting on TikTok every other day for the entire year at least. So stay tuned for that. If you wanna follow my TikTok, check it out. I'm apocalypto underscore 12 over there as well. You can probably search Tyler Scheid and find it as well. Um, and last but not least, um, I am working on letting go of the things I can't control. Stop letting things bother me and affect me and instead focusing on the stuff that I can do and stop making excuses and I'm going out and getting it. I'm going after those things that I've put off for years. I'm working on reels for acting and voice acting. I'm, I'm posting on TikTok, I'm being creative and I'm trying to be better overall um, on social to build, my, build myself as an internet personality, which is how I feel I am. I, I, I don't want to be called a streamer. I don't want to be called a YouTuber. I don't want to be a TikToker. I don't like being put in a box because I'm a creative person and I'm all over the internet doing a lot of different things. I'm an actor. I'm teaching myself guitar, which is right here. Um, I've written music before with friends and hopefully I'll put out a, a single of an old song I wrote together with my friend Alex. Um, I've got a lot of ambition for this year. And it's, I've kicked it off on the right foot and I'm starting off the right way. But um, this video was more so to really fill you in about 2021, what it was for me, what really happened um, and what was going on with more details. I also wanna end this by saying, hey, COVID's still going on, be safe out there. But at the end of the day, you are a gift. You are wonderful. You are an incredible person. And if you don't like something about yourself or you, you're struggling in those moments, there are things out there that you can do. Um, there are places that'll help. There's suicide helplines, there's, there's therapy, there's, there's people that just care about you, that can be there for you. But there, there's also so much you can put out into this world and inspire others and, and work towards. If you don't like something, you can work to change it. It may not happen overnight. It may not happen when you want it to happen. It may not happen maybe in your lifetime, but you can work to improve it. Whether it's dealing with pollution, dealing with the climate crisis, dealing with uh, a relationship you're struggling with, or dealing with something you don't like about yourself, you can work at it. And you can work towards being the person that you want to be, the person you really are. Put that out in the world. That's the gift. That's something that you have that nobody else has. And that's what I'm trying to do this year. So I, I, I ask one thing of you. Do the things that you want to do. Pay attention to your responsibilities. Prioritize accordingly. But go out and get it. Make 2022 your year. You can do that. You have that power. Environmental things are going to happen. Things are going to change. You're going to have to shift priorities. Stuff is going to happen. But you can grab this year by the balls, by the horns, whatever expression you want, and make it yours. Make it the year of you. Make it the year that you do the things that you've been putting off. You do the things that you need to do for yourself. 
and let's make 2022 a great year. In spite of all that's happening in the world, in spite of the terrible stuff that might be thrown your way, the darkness, the roughness, the, the sadness, you've got that power and you've got that light. You inspire me every day. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Smile always, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. If you'd like to help me as a creator, follow me on all the socials and TikTok and all of that, but like, share, comment, all those things are an immense help to fight the algorithm and put the video up there all over the places so that I can continue to be a creator and continue to put out content and, and motivation and inspire others because that's all I dream to do. So be sure to do that. Thank you so much. Bye.